In this video, I'm going to be going over a comparison of the MetaQuest 3, MetaQuest 2, and the MetaQuest Pro to find out which one is the best and most worth the money. Now, this comparison section is part of a longer video that goes over unboxing, specs, tips and tricks, and full setup. And if you want to see that video, I will have a link down below in the description. I have a chart made up of specs and features between the Quest 2, Quest 3, and Quest Pro. Let's run down the list and figure out which headset wins based on points. One of the most important things in any headset is the processor, as it will determine the graphics and complexity of gameplay. Quest 2 has the Snapdragon XR2, which was very impressive at the time the headset was released. But many VR enthusiasts are becoming anxious for more impressive experiences, and this chip from 2020 is only capable of so much. Quest 3 has the all-new Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 processor. As we've seen in the game footage, this new chip is able to produce graphics that are getting scary close to PC VR. Moving over to Quest Pro, it has been packed with a Snapdragon XR2 Plus. This is the same chip that is in the Quest 2, but it has been overclocked to be able to handle a bigger workload. This is due to the headset's ability to run at a cooler temperature. In this category, I have to give the win to Quest 3's XR2 Gen 2. It is Qualcomm's next big jump, and it's simply capable of so much more than the previous versions. For RAM, we have 6GB on Quest 2, 8GB on Quest 3, and 12GB on Quest Pro. The easy win here goes to the Quest Pro. When it comes to resolution, on the Quest 2 we have 1832 by 1920 in each eye with one LCD screen. Quest 3 has 2064 by 2208 in each eye with two separate LCDs. And the Quest Pro has 1800 by 1920 in each eye with two LCDs. This round is going to be another for the Quest 3. A high refresh rate is going to determine how smooth and natural everything feels. The Quest 2 has been updated to hit just about anything you want from 60Hz, 72Hz, 80Hz, 90Hz, all the way up to 120Hz. The Quest 3 can be run at 72Hz, 80Hz, 90Hz, and 120Hz, with the Quest Pro having limited options of 72Hz or 90Hz. Because most of the time you will be using 90Hz or 120 I'm going to call this one a tie between Quest 2 and Quest 3. We talked about the lenses earlier, and we covered the fact that Quest 2 has the older Fresnel lenses, whereas the Quest 3 and Quest Pro have been updated to have the newer and much better pancake lenses. So for this round, it's a tie between the Quest 3 and the Quest Pro. IPD adjustment is really important to make sure VR is viewably comfortable for many different people that have a range of interpupillary distance. With Quest 2, you have a click system that offers you three specific measurements, 58 millimeters, 63 millimeters, or 68 millimeters. Quest 3 has that dial that is going to give you a very nice range of 53 to 73 millimeters. Quest Pro offers a similar but slightly skewed range at 55 millimeters to 75 millimeters. This on paper would make them tied, and I will say that Quest 3 and Quest Pro both have excellent sweet spots of visual clarity. In my experience, I do feel the range of focus is even better on the Quest 3, so I'm going to give the point to the newest headset. You're going to want a good field of view on your headset because the wider it is, the more immersive your experience will be and it'll cause it to feel less like you are staring at a screen. Quest 2 gives you 96 by 96, Quest 3 gives you 110 by 96, and again, Quest Pro is coming in a hair under Quest 3 with 106 by 96. That's another point for Quest 3. The importance of storage varies from person to person, but if you plan on buying many games and recording footage, you are probably going to need space. With Quest 2, you have the options of 128GB or 256GB. Quest 3, you have 128GB and 512GB. And with Quest Pro, there is one unit that offers 256GB. Quest 3 wins again with that 512GB option. Keeping the cost down on these headsets is extremely necessary as VR is still on its way to mainstream adoption. The 128GB Quest 2 is available for $300 or you have the 256GB option that is priced at $350. Sometimes they do run sales where you can pick up a Quest 2 as cheap as $250. Quest 3 has the price boost for the tech of $500 for the 128GB or $650 for the 512GB. The Quest Pro originally came out with a $1,500 price tag, but even after having its price cut, it still has a very high cost of $1,000 for 256 gigabytes. This round goes to the Quest 2, as it is still a really great headset for the low price. If you plan on having long game sessions, battery life is key. Quest 2 will usually give you around 2 to 3 hours of gameplay before you have to plug it in and charge up. Quest 3, so far in my tests, runs around 1 hour and 45 minutes to about 2 hours, depending on what type of application you're throwing at it. Quest Pro is stated to have a battery life of 1 to 2 hours. 
This round's point is going to go to quest 2. When it comes to tracking, gone are the days of having to place external sensors all around your room hoping they have your body in clear range as not to lose your spatial position in VR. In modern times, VR headsets use what is called inside-out tracking, a method where the headset cameras can read the room and figure out where it is spatially, eliminating the need to place sensors around the environment. Because all three headsets have inside-out tracking, we will award no point for this round, but I thought it was important to mention as it is part of the overall specs. Let's talk about what all of the cameras and sensors are capable of on each headset. With Quest 2, you will have four external cameras. They do a pretty good job tracking, and this older system is even capable of mixed reality, but it will be limited to a blurry, somewhat distorted black and white view. The Quest 3's six external cameras do an excellent job tracking, and when it comes to mixed reality, two of these cameras are RGB, capable of giving you full color mixed reality. The image can still be slightly distorted at times, but it is far superior to anything else I have ever tried. And and it's good enough that for the first time you can read text from your phone or computer screen while still in the headset. The Quest Pro, you have five external cameras and five internal cameras. And like the previous headsets, it does an excellent job tracking the headset itself. But the Quest Pro has an added bonus with those five internal cameras that are going to give you full facial tracking. With this, you will be able to translate exactly where your eyes are looking, little things like blinking, and how your mouth is moving. This shows your human emotions translated through the animation of your avatar. So. With this category, it comes down to the advanced mixed reality color and depth of the Quest 3 versus the advanced facial tracking of the Quest Pro. Because the Pro has been out for a while and I still have not yet seen much implication of the facial tracking technology, I'm going to predict that having better mixed reality cameras will be more of a bonus. And that is why I've decided to give this round to the Quest 3. Let's talk controllers. Quest 2's touch hand controllers track through many tiny sensors built into the rings on each one. The headset's cameras pick up these sensors to make sure the touch controllers are tracked to the proper location. They work really well, only losing tracking if you have them at extreme angles behind your head and out of range of the headset. Battery life lasts a very long time with just one AA in each controller. I usually go weeks, if not months, before having to change them out. Obviously, this can vary depending on how much game time you put in. With Quest 3, we have the new Touch Plus controllers. I feel they do a better job when using them at more extreme angles. In addition, these new Touch Plus controllers have eliminated the ring like we saw earlier, and now the sensors are built into the controller itself. It's nice being able to bring the controllers closer together without the rings getting in the way. Battery life performance using one AA battery per controller is similar to the Quest 2's, and these Touch Plus controllers have improved haptic feedback. This should create more immersion by using built-in motors inside of each controller that will react to physical things within VR and AR environments. The Quest Pro comes with the more advanced Touch Pro controllers. This version has built-in rechargeable batteries that last around 8 hours, but the Pro also comes with a full charging dock for the headset as well as the Pro controllers. So when the hardware is not in use, you will always be charging back up, giving you full juice for each session. In addition, the Pros do not use sensors tracked by the headset. Instead, they have three inside-out trackers and Snapdragon 662 processor chips built into each one of the controllers. With this boosted power and camera information feeding to the headset, you should never lose control controller tracking no matter where they are. On top of that, the haptic feedback is very good. There's no debate, the win in this category goes to the Quest Pro's touch controllers. I just want to make note that if you would like to upgrade the Quest 2 or Quest 3 to the Pro controllers, they are compatible. The last category we have on the list is going to be headset weight. Depending on how light and how well distributed the weight is on any given headset will determine how long you are comfortable within that headset. Quest 2 is the lightest coming in at 503 grams, but the headset is thicker, so it sticks out further, pushing some of that weight out, and in my experiences, it starts to become slightly uncomfortable after about an hour and a half. Quest 3 is a little bit heavier coming in at 515 grams, but the reduced optical stack, the Y-shaped strap, and the way it rests on my face, to me, it feels lighter, and I can comfortably play until the battery runs low. Quest Pro weighs 722 grams being the heaviest headset, and although it does have a very impressive head mount design setup, as I stated earlier, I found the concentrated pressure being directed to the back and only one small part of my forehead to be unbearable to wear after about 45 minutes due to steadily increasing discomfort. I'm giving this round to the Quest 3. It's time to tally up the points. The Quest 2 has a combined score of 3 points. The Quest 3 has a score of 9 points. And the Quest Pro has an added up score of 3 points. This makes the Quest 3 the winner by a 6 point lead. Of course, this is partly based on my own personal opinion and other people's tastes will vary. With that said, I do not believe my score sheet is terribly shocking as Quest 3 is the newest deck available.
All right, that's going to wrap up this short little clip. Again, if you want to see the full version of the review, that link's down below in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.